You really need a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty long. You like it or you don't like it? I think it's time to go. <laughs> I think this is the longest my beard's ever been. There you go. Yeah, what do you think, huh? Looking better? I keep the beard or should we do something different? Sure. It was a pretty solid goatee, yeah? Yeah. You like it? <laughs> you like you that? Does that look good? Yeah, you look handsome with it. Yeah, you, know, you think I should keep this forever? Keep it, keep it. What do you think, babe? You like it? Nathan, do I have an excellent mustache? Mm. So Becca, do you like it? Or do you love it? Is that your favorite one so far? I think so. Okay. Luke here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and I'm in Alaska. I'm going spear fishing. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, 2021 is a weird year, and to make it even weirder, I've gotten into spear fishing. I really love doing it. But I don't live by the ocean, so whenever I'm traveling, I try to see if I can't get a chance to go do some spear fishing. That's kind of what I'm doing this year. So when I got unexpectedly stuck in Alaska for a couple weeks, I decided to see if I couldn't go spear fishing. And I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm going spear fishing for Northern Pike. All right, I think this is where I'm supposed to meet up with everyone. All right guys, we've got a group here that's meeting up to do some spear fishing in freshwater for Northern Pike. So uh, I've never been with these guys, just kind of met up by chance. So uh, I'm gonna just see if I can keep up with everybody and not embarrass myself. Well, before we head off, I gotta change into my wetsuit and uh, I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna pull that off, but I'm not gonna film it, so. <laughs> Whew, wasn't easy, but I got it done. <laughs> yeah, it's nice when you're wearing stretchy camo pants in public when you got a group of people to do it with you, you know? Look at that. That is sexy. All right, we're just carpooling over to the lake and uh, we're gonna go see what this is like. Remember kids, don't go to a second location with someone you met online. <laughs> Nothing like sitting in the rain in Alaska, taking your shirt off. It's like full body Spanx. You gotta spray yourself down with some sort of like conditioner or shampoo or you know baby shampoo, otherwise it sticks against your skin and you tear your wetsuit. So I actually just bought a brand new three prong, but because I wasn't planning on doing this, I didn't bring it, so. I now own two brand new three songs. Look at that, it does matter. Lucky <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember yours. <laughs> you know I got into spear fishing yeah. just so I could wear a knife on my leg. <laughs> you ready to do this? Let's do it man, Let's I'm excited. Do we got quite a group of people here. All right guys, we're going after Northern Pike and I know a lot of people consider Northern Pike a valued trophy fish and they are. They're an absolute wonderful fish to catch, but they are very invasive in this part of Alaska. They've been illegally introduced and they cause a lot of damage to the trout and salmon and native populations and the populations just absolutely explode in these lakes. And because there's nothing that preys on them, the populations explode, they wipe out the native fish, then the pike populations collapse and you have both bad salmon fishing and bad northern pike fishing. And the fish we catch are gonna get donated to the native hospital in Anchorage. People from the bush who end up flying to the hospital for treatment often really miss having wild food to eat. They, they live off of wild meats, their traditional diets. And so people who have wild meat will, can donate it to the hospital to help prepare traditional meals that the people are used to and it's a nice thing to do for people that are having a rough time in the hospital. So that's what we're gonna be doing with the meat here. But I've never been to this particular lake, but there are a lot of lakes here in this part of Alaska that are absolutely crawling with invasive pike. Uh, I've been on some lakes where we catch 80 something pike in one day. The problem is, is because they have no predators, they end up just multiplying and multiplying until they start to wipe each other out and they get all stunted and you end up catching, you know, a hundred fish in one day, but they're all kind of tiny and runty. So coming in here and thinning them out a little bit, 
it's not only good for the native fish, but it's also good for the pike fishermen because it keeps those pike from ending up being super small if you can thin them out a little bit. I'm going fishing for a fish I've never speared before in a place I've never speared before with gear I've never used before with people I've never met before. This is a day of firsts. Shove right down in there. Keeps the droplets off. Probably pretty close to maxing out the wood on this thing. I think it's so low in the water. It's like four or five inches above the water. Fat boat coming in. Perfect time. You guys can rally together. All right, guys, here we are. We're gonna try this out. We're breaking up into pairs and each of the canoes are kind of picking a little cove and we're gonna go along and see if we can't poke a pike. So this is my first time diving in fresh water and it was a bit of a murky experience. You can see that the visibility was only a couple feet here. It's in really shallow water and we ended up having to go right up into the shore to be able to see the bottom. So I think I'm only in a foot and a half, two feet of water right here. And uh, the camera is mounted on the top of my goggles so that when my eyes are underwater, sometimes the camera's kind of half in, half out of water. But uh, we ended up just kind of swimming along the shore looking for pike. So it took me about 30 minutes or so to see my first pike. I was swimming a little to the side and behind Drew and he must have scared a pike because it starts to swim and I barely get a glimpse of it through the murk. And you can see it just barely on the camera here. And I got tried to get my spear up and I'm turning my head and it's gone. You know, it just moved a few inches away and you couldn't see it anymore in the, in the murk. So, and that was what it was kind of like for the first little bit. You just, you would see these little shadows coming in and out as you were scaring pike away, but it, you just briefly see them and wouldn't have time to get your spear up. But it was really cool. We're in this uh, margins here and we're going under lily pads and in weed beds and crawling over logs and just kind of hoping to find a pike hidden away under a log or under a lily pad or something like that. Even though the visibility was garbage, we saw a lot of cool stuff. I found these big old freshwater clams and saw a bunch of uh, freshwater lice and shrimp. And one guy got a leech on his face, so that's kind of neat. But uh, right here, I saw another pike and I tried to chase him a little bit to get a better shot at him and he disappeared into these weeds. Well, that was an interesting experience. The visibility is only like a foot or two. And, uh, but it's it's actually really comfortable, this seven mil wetsuit. I'm, I'm actually quite toasty. But uh, we spent about an hour kicking around and I only saw two pike. Uh, both of them were moving and not like stationary. So they just kind of, see them just kind of come around me. And by the time I got my spear up, yeah, it was, it was too late. It was way cool. Saw a lot of clams and little weird little bugs and freshwater shrimp and stuff. It's hard like there's two that just kind of like just too late because they're right yeah, in front of your face. Them, yeah. In front of your yeah, face and you, you guys, can't. Last time I well, All right, so word on the street is even the guys that have done this a few times uh, had a rough go of it. The visibility's a bit worse than normal. So that makes me feel a little better, you know? <laughs> we'll see if anyone else got any. There's a lot of spears in the water today. Okay, we're back at where we launched the boats, waiting for everyone else to group, and we just saw a little pike jump. So, you know, we're doing this. So a guy I was diving with named Andrew loaned me his dive light and it made a huge difference. I could kind of see the pike reflecting gold in the light. And there was about four pike in this little cove that I saw and one of them I actually got to spear. Unfortunately, my GoPro battery died and I didn't get it on camera. Okay, I have no idea how much my head cam was recording because it died right out there, but we just saw one jump and went in there and just Try to check it around, saw four really quick using a dive light. And I tagged one that came off the spear. And then these guys 
found him just hanging out on the surface. So, so I, maybe, maybe I got an assist. <laughs> there you go. That's a really, that's a pretty typical size pike around here, I imagine, right? Yeah. They got tons of teeth on them. They'll chew your fingers up so bad. Oh yeah, look at those tiny little chompers. Oh, it's like a Brillo pad in there. <laughs> you woke him up. <laughs> so Alex, you get, those are yours? Yeah. Oh, sweet. I've never Look at that. Well, there we go, guys. That was some rough visibility, but that was loads of fun. So in the end, I think only three fish got tagged, but uh, you know, it was a good time. But uh, I need to clean up my fish and uh, get that gutted before I run out of light. All right, guys, I'm back at the house and we're gonna cook up one of those pike. We were gonna donate them, but because we shot so few of them, uh, we decided not to waste the hospital's time and uh, we're just gonna cook them up. So I've got one of them and I'm gonna cook it up and I'm gonna try some funky recipes because we are leaving on a plane tonight and I didn't have time to go out and do a bunch of shopping and fancy cooking. So we're gonna do kind of a what do we have in the cupboard sort of cooking thing. And I got some fun ideas. If you think that freshwater fish sometimes taste a little bit muddy, add buttermilk or vinegar to the meat and let it sit for just anywhere from 40 minutes to a few hours and just let it marinate in that just a little bit and it really cuts out that muddy flavor. I don't know if this pike's gonna taste that way, but uh, I've got a little bit of a mango vinaigrette here and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna season the meat a little bit before we start prepping the fish just to do that. Yeah. Would you like to eat some pike? Um, no. All right, so pike is infamous for having lots of little bones. And see these, these are Y bones. You see how they, they're shaped like a Y? That's, that's why they call them Y bones. But they're really easy to take out of the meat after it's cooked. Just marinate in a little bit of vinegar, fried in a little oil, seasoned with a little bit of garlic salt. Nothing fancy. Pike have really tiny little scales too, so if you fry them in oil, it, the skin tastes really good and the scales kind of just add this nice little crunch like potato chips. The skin and scales is actually the best part. If you want to see a fancier recipe for cooking pike, I did a catch and cook pike video uh, about a year ago. I can put a link down in the video description of that. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this short little pike fishing video and uh, I just had a great time. It was kind of this random opportunity to go spear fishing for pike popped up and I'm like, yeah, I gotta do that. So. Had a great time. But thanks for watching. Hope you had a great day. And don't forget to click subscribe. Put out new videos every Saturday morning. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.